Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and you've reached the Book of Mormon Lecture Series. I've been teaching seminary and institute for the last 11 years, and uh, this is an attempt to do a deep dive into the Book of Mormon itself. I'm hoping that you'll find this uplifting and edifying. This is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but every attempt has been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. So if you're ready for a deep dive into the Book of Mormon, here we go. Hi, and welcome back to the Book of Mormon podcast. This discussion is going to be in Alma chapter 20. So remember that uh, Ammon has been among the Lamanites. He's uh, talked to the king Lamoni, and uh, their people, the king and his uh, servants and the queen have been converted, and uh, they're teaching others now, and uh, they're getting all ready to uh, um, try to convert the rest of them. Now, uh, Ammon decides that he needs to leave and to go uh, rescue one of his brothers that's in prison. Um, but uh, Lamoni is going to go with him. Now, remember in the previous chapter that uh, King Lamoni's father was having a banquet for all of his uh, kings and his sons, and that's a big deal. Um, to miss a banquet like that was tantamount to being treasonous. And so we're going to encounter uh, Lamoni's dad here in a minute. And this is a very serious offense that, uh, that he does. It's inexcusable in accordance to their, their rules. Uh, Alma chapter 20, verse 1, It came to pass that when they had established a church in that land, that King Lamoni desired that Ammon should go with him to the land of Nephi, that he might show him unto his father. And the voice of the Lord came unto Ammon, saying, Thou shalt not go up to the land of Nephi, for behold, the king will seek thy life. However, in verse 8, he meets up with the king, but because he is not in his palace, Ammon's life is spared. But thou shalt go to the land of Madoni, for behold, thy brother Aaron, and also Mulekai, and Amma, are in prison. So remember I mentioned that there are others besides just the four sons of Mosiah that are on this mission. Here we have a couple of other missionary companions that have gone with uh, with a couple of, of the brothers here. Verse 3, Now it came to pass that when Ammon had heard this, he said unto Lamoni, Behold, my brother and brethren are in prison in, at Madoni, and I go that I may deliver them. Now Lamoni had said, said unto Ammon, I know in the strength of the Lord thou canst do all things. But behold, I will go with thee, to the land of Madoni, for the king of the land of Madoni, whose name is Antiomno, is a friend or an ally unto me. Therefore I go to the land of Madoni, that I may flatter the king of the land, and he will cast thy brethren out of prison. Now Lamoni said unto him, Who told thee that thy brethren were in prison? And Ammon said unto him, No one hath told me, save it be God. And he said unto me, Go, and deliver thy brethren, for they are in prison in the land of Madoni. Now when Lamoni had heard this, he caused that his servants should make ready his horses and his chariots. And he said unto Ammon, Come, I will go with thee down to the land of Madoni, and there I will plead with the king, that I will cast thy brethren out of prison. And it came to pass that as Ammon and Lamoni were journeying thither, they met the father of Lamoni, who was king over all the land. As Ammon and Lamoni are traveling, they meet Lamoni's father. This is the same father that Lamoni was going to take Ammon to see, and to whom the Lord suggested that he would seek Ammon's life. We have the very interesting situation where the Lord told Ammon not to go to Lamoni's father, but that is the very man they meet while on their way to the other mission given them by the Lord. In this case, we must assume that the Lord knew very well that they would meet Lamoni's father on the road. As we will see, the intent to kill will still be there, but meeting the king on the road has probably placed Ammon in a different situation where he will be able to act in, in ways where he would have been constrained had he been before the king in his palace. For instance, it will be clear at this story, as this story continues, that Ammon is armed, and that makes a great difference in the, in the ending of this tale. Had Ammon appeared before the king in his court, it is unlikely that he would have had been allowed as a Nephite to enter the presence of the king armed. And that was a quote by Brant Gardner. Verse 9, And behold, the father of Lamoni... All right, verse 9, And behold, the father of Lamoni, we don't know his name, said unto him, Why did ye not come to the feast on that great day when I made a feast unto my sons and unto my people? Attendance at this feast was mandatory. And he also said, Whither art thou going with this Nephite, who is one of the children of a liar? So he's very prejudiced, isn't he? And it came to pass that Lamoni rehearsed unto him whether he was going, for he feared to offend him. And he also told him all the cause of his tearing in his own kingdom, that he did not go unto his father to the feast which he had prepared. And now when Lamoni had rehearsed unto him all these things, behold, to his astonishment, his father was angry with him and said, Lamoni, thou art going to deliver these Nephites who are sons of a liar. Behold, he robbed our fathers, and now his children are also come amongst us that they may, by their cunning and their lyings, deceive us that they may again rob us of our property. 
The tradition among the Lamanites was that the Nephites stole the birthright from Laman and all the important relics as well. 14. Now the father of Lamoni commanded him that he should slay Ammon with the sword. And he also commanded him that he should not go to the land of Madoni, but that he should return with him to the land of Ishmael. This is a test to Lamoni of his loyalty to the king. He is also jeopardizing the safety of his own people by severing alliances with his father's kingdom. But Lamoni said unto him, I will not slay Ammon. Uh, to defy the king was treason. Neither will I return to the land of Ishmael, but I go to the land of Madoni, that I may release the brethren of Ammon, for I know that they are just men and holy prophets of the true God. Now when his father had heard these words, he was angry with him, and he drew his sword, that he might smite him to the earth. But Ammon stood forth and said unto him, Behold, thou shalt not slay thy son. Nevertheless, it were better that he should fall than thee, for behold, he has repented of his sins. But if thou shouldst fall at this time in thine anger, thy soul could not be saved. Ammon's statement implies that the king would have been guilty of murder. Joseph Smith taught that one guilty of murder, one that sheds innocent blood, cannot have forgiveness. Such a one would be guilty of the unforgivable sin, one for which the atonement of Christ cannot bring remission of sins, the guilty person will suffer for his or her own sin. Murder, the unlawful killing of another human being with malice aforethought, is the second most serious sin. It is an abomination in the sight of God because it, unlike chastity, or like unchastity, involves the unlawful tampering with human life. It is a sin unto death, an offense which is called the unforgivable sin. The call of re to repentance and baptism, which includes murderers, has reference to those who took life while engaged in unrighteous wars, as did the Lamanites, because they were compelled to do so, and not because they in their hearts sought the blood of their fellow men. On the other hand, the Jews, on whose, blood, on whose hands the blood of Christ was found, were not invited to repent and be baptized. That was by Bruce R. McConkie. Verse 18, and again it is expedient that thou shouldst forbear, for if thou shouldst slay thy son, he being an innocent man, his blood would cry from the ground. The earth is the mother of life and is the womb of the resurrection also. From the earth we are resurrected, and out from the earth we are born. She is mother earth. She is the mother of life and the womb of the resurrection. The, de the destruction of life in any form is the reversal and perversion of existence itself, as we learn in Ether 8.19. It is, an un, it is an unspeakably horrendous calamity deliberately to reverse the process for which the earth was created. If the earth accepts their blood, it will cry from the ground and demand vengeance as it does in the book of Moses. That's by Hugh Nibley. Continuing verse 18, to the Lord his God for vengeance to come upon thee, and perhaps thou wouldst lose thy soul. Now when Ammon had said these words unto him, he answered him, saying, I know that if I should slay my son, that I should shed innocent blood, for it is thou that hast sought to destroy him. And he stretched forth his hand to slay Ammon, but Ammon withstood his blows, and also smote his arm that he should not use it. Now when the king saw that Ammon could slay him, he began to plead with Ammon that he would spare his life. Notice how good Ammon is at, uh, at hitting people's arms with his sword. Uh, but Ammon raised his sword and said unto him, Behold, I will smite thee, except thou wilt grant unto me that, thy, that my brethren may be cast out of prison. Now the king, fearing he should lose his life, said, If thou wilt spare me, I will grant unto thee whatsoever thou wilt, even to half the kingdom. This was the correct political thing to do. To keep from losing his life, it was common to give away half the kingdom, to be able to, commute, to, to, be able to continue to be king. Verse 24, Now when Ammon saw that he had wrought upon the old king according to his desire, he said unto him, If thou wilt grant that my brethren may be cast out of prison, and also that Lamoni may retain his kingdom, and that ye may not be dis he be not displeased with him, but grant that he may do according to his own desires, and whatsoever thing he, he thinketh, then will I spare thee, otherwise I will smite thee to the earth. If Ammon had not won this fight, Lamoni would also have died. Now when Ammon had said these words, the king began to rejoice because of his life. In refusing the half of the kingdom and in sparing the king's life, the king had no, ex no expectation of that outcome. 26. And when he saw that Ammon had no desire to destroy him, and when he also saw the great love he had for his son Lamoni, he, all, he was astonished exceedingly and said, Because this is all that thou hast desired, that I would release thy brethren and suffer that my son Lamoni should retain his kingdom. Behold, I will grant unto you that my son may retain his kingdom from this time and forever, and I will govern him no more. And I will also grant unto thee that thy brethren may be cast out of prison, and thou and thy brethren may come unto me in my kingdom, for I will I shall greatly desire to see thee. For the king was greatly astonished at the words which he had spoken, and also at the words which had been spoken by his son Lamoni. Therefore he was desirous to learn, learn them. 
And it came to pass that Ammon and Lamoni proceeded on their journey towards the land of Madoni, and Lamoni found favor in the eyes of the king of the land. Therefore the brethren of Ammon were brought forth out of prison. Mary and Hank said that the promise is that in times of sorrow and affliction, if we endure and remain faithful and put our trust in him and are courageous, the Lord will visit us in our afflictions, strengthen us to carry out burdens and support us in our trials. He'll be with us to the end of our days, lift us at the last day to greater opportunities for service and exalt us at last with him and reunited loved ones. And he will consecrate our afflictions to our gain. 29 and when Ammon did meet them he was exceedingly sorrowful for behold they were in they were naked and their skins were worn exceedingly because of being bound with strong cords and they also had suffered hunger thirst and all kinds of afflictions nevertheless they were patient the reason that patience is such a virtue is that so few people have it patient in all their sufferings and as it happened it was their lot to have fallen into the hands of a more hardened and a more stiff-necked people therefore they would not hearken unto their words and they had cast them out and had smitten them and had driven them from house to house and from place to place, even until they had arrived in the land of Madoni. And there they were taken and cast into prison and bound with strong cords and kept in prison for many days and were delivered by Lamoni and Aaron or, and Ammon. At least uh, they weren't killed according to the promise of uh, Mosiah. And so this is a promise that they were given. So uh, again, I bear testimony to the truth of these things and that the, that the gospel is true and that so is the Book of Mormon. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. See you next time. Bye.